Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the streamer network. Today, I'll be showing you how to create a data stream and publish data to that data stream. In this particular tutorial, I'll be taking the CPU data from this Raspberry Pi and publishing it to the data stream, but it can be whatever data you'd like. First, let's just start by creating our project and our uh, computer. So I'm gonna call mine rpi-cpu. And then we can create our package.json by running npm init-y. And the first thing we can do while we're waiting is install streamer client, npm package. That's gonna take a while. So while that's going on, we can go to streamer network and open up streamer core. As a prerequisite for streamer core, you'll need a MetaMask wallet. And here it will ask you to log into your MetaMask wallet but I've already logged in, so I don't need to do that. I can come up here and create a stream. We'll call it rpi-cpu, create the stream. And now our stream's created. We can get our stream ID, which we'll need to use later on to actually, um, to actually publish the stream. And we can scroll down here and we can actually find code snippet that allows us to publish to the stream. So as you can see, we'll be using the client, the streamer client and we'll need our MetaMask private key, which we'll get in a second. And it uses the stream ID um, as the first parameter for the publish function and then an object and that's the data we'll be passing in. And then here we will be able to see a preview of our data once we are starting to publish the data. And finally, this is optional, but I'm gonna check uh, that I'm going to check store data storage. So this is going to take quite a while. So I'll cut back once it's finished up and we can continue from there. Now that the NPM package has been installed, we can start creating our project. First, we'll create our entry point, which is index.js. We'll also need to install another package called .env. That is, this will allow us to use environment variables in our project, but this will only take a second. And we can also uh, create a file called .env, which will store our private key. That way, in case we would like to um, push our code to GitHub, we won't accidentally uh, publish our private key. So with that, we also create a .gitignore. And we'll add .env to the gitignore so that we don't accidentally show our private key. Now, finally, we can start editing our uh, index file. So first, we have to require in our streamer client. We'll also, in order to use our environment variables will require in .env as well. And in order to use it, we'll just have to um, call the config method. So first we'll create an instance of the client. And then this is where we'll add our private key. And in order to use it, uh, in order to use an environment variable, all we have to do is do process.env and then the name of our private uh, the name of our environment variable so I'll name it private key and we'll add that to our .env file in just a second now for now we're just going to um, push some dummy data to the stream just to make sure that it's working so we'll call we'll create a method called publish data and the data we want to publish will just be um, data, the string hello world. And to publish, we call client.publish. And we'll go here to our 
stream. We'll copy the stream ID. And we'll paste it in. And we'll pass an object um, data. And since we can actually use ES6 syntax and just shorten it to this. Great. Now, finally, we have to actually call this method. I'll use set interval so that every uh, one second it will call the publish data method or function. So it will publish hello world every second. The last thing we need to do is actually uh, add the private key to our environment variables. So remember, we called it private key equals. And now we need to go find our private key. So remember, a private key is exactly what it's called, private. So we don't want to show it to anyone. Uh, this is how you access your private key at MetaMask. And you need to type in your password again. And remember, if someone were to get access to your private key, they would be able to get access to your fund. So it's very important you don't expose it. Now we can save and we can actually run our script. I have another terminal open and I'll run node index.js. And uh, let's see. And right before I run it, I actually would like to add one last thing. Just as a way of confirming that it's working, I will console log the data as well. So it seems to be working. Um, we don't get an error that it's not authenticated, so it should be authenticated. If we scroll down here, it may take a second. You can go back and <clears throat> there we go. We can see our hello world getting updated every second. Yep, perfect. Now we can move on to the more interesting part. So the basic foundation of this project is this file called proc slash stats. As you can see here, it gives us the CPU usage of the Raspberry Pi. And if we print it again, it changes every single time because of, co of course, you know, the CPU, CPU usage is changing all the time. So we'll be reading from this file we'll be calculating the percentage of the CPU usage, and that's the data we'll be pushing every second to the data stream. So let's get started with that. Instead of publish data, we're, we're gonna delete all of this. We're gonna call it get CPU info. And just to help us out a little bit, we're also gonna create, um, well, first we need to create some objects that will hold the current CPU info and the past CPU info because we need the past in order to uh, calculate the current percentage, um, which may seem confusing at first, but you will see in a second that it will make sense. Oops. Okay, we'll also create a helper function that will just ca basically calculate the percentage rather than we won't use the actual difference of the CPU usage, we'll calculate the percentage, which will take the new value and the old value. So this will take the it will look at the total difference in CPU usage, and it will also find the diff the active difference between the CPU usage of the new and the old uh, values. So one will be like 
from second before pretty much and so that that'll be a difference of a second and it will return basically the percentage <clears throat> all right next so this method right here get cpu info will actually replace that here will be called every second so in the beginning we want to store the past cpu info so in order to do that we'll call we'll uh, store the current cpu and cpu info which remember would be from the last second right because we're about to override current cpu info we're storing it in the object last cpu info so now we can copy this three times And then we're also storing um, something called idle, which we'll calculate in this, this function. It'll just be the total minus the active because whatever is not active is obviously idle. Uh, and then another thing we need to require in, this doesn't require us to install any packages, um, is fs. This will help us uh, read the, fi the file from the file system. So we'll read the file proc slash stats. And then this is the callback function that we're defining here where we'll actually use the data. So first we're gonna use some regex to actually parse the data. First we're splitting it up into new lines um, so each line in the file will be an array called lines. So now we can actually get the CPU times. We're only focusing on the first line and we're taking all of the, all of the numbers. Uh, this regex just means we're looking only for numbers and we, the plus sign means one or more of them and um, this will take all of the numbers on the line and it will make it into an array called CPU times. So we're setting total to zero at first. So now we're calculating the uh, idle for the CPU info. This will be using the fourth and the fifth CPU times. And now we're going to go through each number on the first line of the file and adding them all together, and that will give us the total. Basically adding up all the CPU times. Then finally, we're getting the active by taking the total and subtracting the idle. That'll give us the active, obviously. And then finally, we can calculate the percentage being used um, by using our help helper function from be before. Calculate CPU percentage. We'll pass in the last CPU info and the current CPU info. And then finally, that's the data. This is the data we'll be using. So we can actually use that data. First, I'm going to console log it out just to make sure that we have something. Current CPU usage. Percentage used. And we'll add a percentage sign. 
I can copy that client.publish and then one more time we're going to come here and get our stream ID okay and that should be good and now if we try to run our script okay it starts out with undefined but then we get our cpu usage because um, at first it's just not going to be defined that's not an issue we're starting to see our cpu usage and if we check on here there we go. Our data is showing up, which means our script worked. I hope this video was helpful in learning how to publish data to a stream. Again, you can replace this data with whatever data you'd like. Thank you so much for watching.